Looking at sustainable communities, one big problem. Build thousands of them. Go for it. Okay, go out into the world and build thousands of sustainable communities. Do you really think you're going to have much of an impact with 7 billion people unless you're producing an example for others to follow? Well, you're not producing an example for people to follow beyond a certain level because they can't leave their ratchet uh, apartment in town. They can't leave their house that is now worth a lot less because you came out with this sustainable community, <coughs> possibly. So what's the answer? Very, very simple. I, I really, um, when I was out at Angel's Nest, now you've been there, right? I don't think so. Oh, Angel's Nest in Taos. The problem is, is that here is an example of media sustainability. You've got a guy running around trying to patent the idea of sustainable housing. He's taken sustainable concepts and modified them in ways that say, okay, you've designed a passive solar that's supposed to space us the sun and you change his direction because you don't like the view and still build the same design. Mm. That doesn't make sense. But when I was there I realized for all this fluff, the $35,000 a month it costs to run, the fact that it's got this diesel engine running most of the time because the wind and the solar things aren't enough to cover the energy requirements of this behemoth, the solution's the same. I don't care whether you live in that pig or you live in a more sustainable house that you can buy right in any any old neighborhood because it uses less energy. Yeah. The answer is the same. You need three basic things: energy, food, and water. You put all that in a trailer, you're done. We can take an eight by ten trailer uh, with the technology we've got, being conservative by only thirty percent of what I know we can do. We can grow enough food to feed a family of five year-round with an automated system. Now that will sustain an entire family of what you grow in your pantry. This is a living pantry, okay? That same trailer pulls all the, the water you need out of the air. That same trailer has your generator, which powers everything for your house of free energy. Mm, okay. Okay, we've got all three. I've got a, a unit sitting for me in Taos waiting for me to pick it up that pulls water out of the air with the quantity we need. Yeah. The only thing left after that is what do you do with your waste? And that's something you do inside the house with some basic equipment. That takes 90% of the homes in this country or any other off-grid and makes a community sustainable with a trailer. And this is why when we get funding, yes, I'm into, into propulsion. That's my biggest thing, propulsion and fluid dynamics in, in um, over unity. Tesla turbines, I love it, but my first priority is to get these trailers built and the technologies that surround them. This, this same approach leads you to uh, cups that, are, that will deliver a, a gallon of water a day out of any desert climate. So you've got a cup that's always full. That's what you need in, for refugees, that's what you need in, around the world because we're about to enter a water short, shortage for no reason. It's going to lead to the ability to drop a bag this big that when it lands, it turns on and starts immediately producing food in an enclosed space so that you have a place, wherever that was dropped, where you, have, you now have shelter, food, water. Yeah. All these things can be done with a fraction of the amount of effort put into standard relief programs, standard sustainable community approaches, standard um, disaster relief programs. All these technologies simplify that concept so far because of only one thing. You stepped out of the oil game and you said here's a, an energy gen generator and this is all you need.